Welcome back. I'm Linda Kincaid. Good to have you with us. Well, COVID-19 cases inside the Olympics closed loop in Beijing are going up, even with all the PCR tests and constant disinfection. Officials say they found 24 new cases on Monday among Olympic athletes and personnel. Six of them were already inside the bubble that's cut off from the rest of the city. That brings the total number of cases reported inside the bubble to 200. Well, Beijing has now sealed off several neighborhood blocks near Olympic venues as a precaution. And the opening ceremony is just three days away. CNN's David Kova is in Beijing and joins us now. And, uh, David, despite utilizing every possible measure, uh, infection cases are still rising within the Olympic bubble. Every possible measure that you can think of. You're right, Linda, and it's something that we have been living with obviously since the start of the pandemic more than two years ago here it's perhaps the strictest measures in any other country uh, would be be seen really as incredibly uh, restrictive and, and keeping them from day-to-day -day life in fact i was looking at what you were talking about a few minutes ago what you're seeing in europe and denmark the easing of restrictions there the reason that is not going to happen here is because china is adamant about sticking to this zero covid policy that is one case is one too many. And with variants like Omicron, that's making it increasingly difficult to stick to. Nonetheless, you've got leading up to these games, the geopolitics. This is something that obviously we've seen looming for many years coming into 2022. But add to that the raging pandemic and you are seeing a worst case scenario for China. Beijing counting down to the Winter Games, its second Olympics taking place amidst frigid geopolitical tensions and a raging pandemic. This is the largest regularly scheduled peacetime gathering of the world, and yet there can be no gathering. What's likely to be lost in these games is the fact that sporting events are taking place. That's because in the years leading up, China has faced growing outside pressures, and domestically, its zero COVID policy is proving increasingly difficult to stick to. Beijing. Seven years ago, Beijing won the 2022 Olympic bid, the first city to host both a summer and winter games. But the buildup came as China's relations with the West rapidly fell apart. Under an increasingly powerful supreme ruler, Xi Jinping, China is on a drastically different path from what the West had hoped. Cooperation replaced by confrontation on multiple fronts, from a trade war to threats of an actual war in the South China Sea. In Hong Kong, Beijing quickly squashed pro-democracy protests, and it is now mounting pressure on Taiwan, pushing for the self-governing democracy to fall under Beijing's control. Then there are the widespread allegations of human rights abuses. CNN's traveled to the far western region of Xinjiang. It's here the U.S. and other countries accuse China of committing genocide against its ethnic Uyghur population. China has repeatedly denied that it's detained and tortured the Muslim minority and calls the accusations politically motivated lies. But that has not silenced the West. The U.S., U.K., Australia and Canada among the countries protesting through a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Olympics. The Biden administration will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. The diplomatic boycott coinciding with the case of Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai. The former Olympian briefly disappeared in November after she accused a retired national leader of pressuring her into sex. It just so happens to be the same official who led Beijing's bid for the 2022 Games. Amid a growing global outcry, Peng has since resurfaced in multiple state media reports denying she made the accusation. Some have accused the International Olympic Committee of being complicit in China's control over Peng's story as its president, Thomas Bach, tried to reassure the world of Peng's well-being after two video calls with her, the IOC advocating for silent diplomacy to better handle the matter. Bach, now in Beijing, is expected to meet with Peng soon. But that meeting happening behind closed doors inside the so-called closed loop. That's the Olympic bubble holding the athletes, the personnel, the incoming media, kept separate from the rest of China. This as the number of new COVID-19 cases continues to rise and spread across the mainland. China facing a renewed challenge to halt this latest surge. Snap lockdowns, mass testing, contact tracing, all of it stepped up as the country works to show its superiority in containing the virus. State media continuing to label the virus as an imported threat, even dating back to the initial outbreak in Wuhan. 
a consistent propaganda effort to deflect blame and refocus global attention on what is supposed to be a spectacular and unifying event. And threatening to cast a darker shadow over these games, growing tensions between Russia and Ukraine, with Russian President Vladimir Putin expected to meet President Xi on the sidelines of the opening ceremony. These Olympics playing out amidst an increasingly divided world. And Linda, we knew internationally this was going to be very difficult for Beijing as they are dealing with, as we laid out there, a multitude of geopolitical issues. But domestically, you would have thought this would have been a win, if you will, because, well, Olympics are incredibly popular here, and it tends to be a moment where you can gather the country around, rally them together, and bring on excitement and joy. Well, the restrictions that we're seeing put in place, they're reminiscent of what we saw two plus years ago at the start of the outbreak in Wuhan, and it's putting people back in that mindset. And so they're feeling physically very disconnected from the joy of these games. Many are still trying to partake in the celebrations, but it's just not the same. And certainly it's not what they saw back in 2008. So for them, it's perhaps more of an inconvenience to have all of these folks now, particularly in a city like Beijing, the capital city, with barriers everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And as cases are rising. All right, David Culver, good to have you with us. Thanks so much for that report.